Welcome to the audio described program of Arcadia by Tom Stoppard, directed by Jerome Davis. Burning and Cole would like to thank their granting organizations, Raleigh Arts, the Schubert Foundation, North Carolina Arts Council, United Arts Council, and the Mary Duke Biddle Foundation. We would also like to thank our sponsors, Smith Anderson, Telepathic Graphics, W.Y. Rick Robbins, Trophy Brewing and Pizza, Yellow Dog Bread Company, the Downtown Rally Residence Inn by Marriott, and the Classical Station. A note from the artistic director. The first play I ever performed that I didn't write myself was Tom Stophard's The Real Inspector Hound. As I spoke the words, I had only a rudimentary idea of what I was saying but I knew the words were communicating something in a way I had never managed to do in my own young life. The first play my wife, Simmy, remembers being involved with was Tom Stophart's Albert's Bridge. Among Burning Coal's past productions, Tom Stophart's Travesties and Night and Day stand out in my mind as strong representations of what I have wanted our theater to be. Challenging, mercurial, inventive, fierce, like the final round of a very close heavyweight title fight, and sharp in its use of language. Stop hard ticks all those boxes for me. But what is language exactly? There is an idea going around these days that language can be used to suppress people. Sure, unscrupulous people might choose to do so, but had they not language, then certainly the rock, the tree limb, or the bare fist would do them just as well. Like all tools, language can be misused. If you doubt that, listen honestly to your favorite news source. You'll be astonished at what isn't being said. That is a cruel and crushing form of the abuse of language called censorship. But when used for good, language is what lifts people up. It is how we communicate what is imagined, thought, felt, and turns those thoughts into what is tangible and true. In short, language is the only way we express our feelings clearly. Without language, we are alone, as alone as we could ever be. But when we are able to communicate, then surely we have moved even just a bit closer to that other person across the way. And isn't that the only true way to empower ourselves? Stoppart had a very interesting, terrifying childhood. Born in Czechoslovakia, fled the Nazi invasion to Singapore, just in time to have to flee the Japanese invasion, Father killed at sea on a ship falling behind Tom and his mothers. Grew up in India, mother remarried to an icily remote British military man, and into a world thick with silences. But young Tom was watching, and listening. And perhaps it was in that environment where he learned the power of language. His adult life has been spent in pursuit of the perfect word, the masterful phrase, the hilarious retort, as in this from Arcadia. Quote, Thomasina, you did not like my discovery? Septimus, a fancy is not a discovery. Thomasina, a jibe is not a rebuttal. End quote. Is it possible that a 13-year-old would speak to her teacher in such glib and insouciant manner? This one does. And in doing so, language is used to tell a part of this story that, were it being written in novel form, would take pages to describe. Were it being painted, might take gallons. Were it being photographed, well, might not be understood at all. She is his superior, intellectually, though she doesn't know it yet. And through use of language, Thomasina Coverley expresses herself, and we come to know her, and we come to care for her. And that achievement, so rare, is what Tom Stoppard does and has been doing now for the best part of his 86 years on this earth. We are rich in his presence. Jerome Davis, August 2023. Set description. We open on the year 1809 and switch periodically between 1809 and the year 1993 were set in a three-fourths thrust stage. On the stage, there is a raised four-inch wooden platform. Upstage left, there is a door leading to the piano room. Upstage right, 
there's a door leading to the rest of the house. Upstage center are two large French doors that open up to a classic English garden. On the deck, there is an eight-foot long old wooden dinner table with four dinner chairs sitting around the table. On the table, there are quills, pens, ink, books, papers, and a sleepy looking turtle. Upstage right near the doors stands a large wooden desk, big enough for an architect drawing. Downstage left and right are benches. Character Descriptions Thomasia Coverley, played by Susanna Skaggs. Thomasia is 13, later 16-year-old daughter of Lord and Lady Croom. She is a fair complexion, dark hair, and slender build. She wears a white dressing gown and is often barefoot. Septimus Hodge, played by Danielle Ryder. Septimus is Thomasia's tutor, age 22, later 25. He is of medium complexion, slender build, and has shoulder-length curly black hair. He wears Regency attire, signifying upper class. Jellaby, played by Jeffrey Dillard. Jellaby is the crooms butler. He is short, small, and around 40 years old. He wears a butler suit. Ezra Chatter, played by Jacob Berger. Ezra is about 32, medium build, brunette, and dressed in Regency finery. Richard Noakes, played by Chandler Weiss. Richard is middle-aged. He is Lady Croom's gardener. He is of medium build and light complexion. He wears gardener's clothing. Lady Croom, played by Maggie Lee. Lady Croom is Thomasia's mother. She is about 40 years old, dark hair, fair complexion, medium build. She has an aggressive and arrogant demeanor. She is in a period dress. Captain Bryce, played by Tom Christensen. Captain Bryce has short brown hair, is about 40 years old, and the captain of a seafaring vessel. He is dressed accordingly. Augustus Gus Coverley, played by Chance Thompson. Augustus is Thomasia's younger brother. He is a sloppily dressed youngster who is a troublemaker. Gus Coverley is the little brother of Chloe. He has been mute since he has been five years old. He is shy and socially awkward. Hannah Jarvis, played by Emily Reiner. Hannah is tall, brunette, 35, and serious. She wears jeans, a comfortable shirt, and work boots. Chloe Coverley, played by Martha Hitchcock. Chloe is 18, of slender build, dark hair. She also wears jeans and a t-shirt. Bernard Nightingale, played by Byron Jennings. Bernard is 35, black, bald, and very well dressed for the modern times. He is a professor in Sussex. Valentine Coverley, played by Ian Finley. Valentine is Chloe's older brother. He is tall, thin, and well dressed. He is still a student. Arcadia Creative Team Artistic Director Jerome Davis, Managing Director Simi Kastner, Technical Director Master Electrician Barry Jaked, Production Stage Manager George Waller, Scenery Design Stephen R. White, Lighting Design Chris Popowich, Costume Design Beth Gargren, Properties Design Randy Carter, Sound Design David Marshall, Graphics Designer Natalie Weigel, House Manager Carrie Vaughn, Assistant Stage Manager Ryan Vasconcelos, Board Operator Kat Cup, Assistant Director Female Understudy Lisa Pope, Dialect Coach Kirby Wall, Assistant Stage Managers Courtney Pensino and Addison Florio, Scenic Change Meredith Riggin, Intimacy Coordinator Veronica Dress, Sound Engineer Juan Eisler.